You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. What up, man? This is your boy, Al Mega. Welcome to a brand new Comic Crusaders Podcast. You know how we do. Today we got a dynamic duo, an incredible creative team over here. They got a dope fire project you guys need to check out. That's currently on Kickstarter now. We got plenty of time, but we got to make it rain on this project called Burbank. Dope comic book series. I got the creative team right here. Let me introduce them right now. The one, the only, Mr. Justin Fisher and Woo. Grant Robertson. Where are you doing now? Uh, yeah. Woo. What are you guys doing? We're doing great. Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Is Grant frozen on me? What's going on here? <laughs> Come on, Grant. I don't feel frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, thank you for coming on uh, to hang out and, and talk about your fire project. You know, thank thank you for wanting to come on and talk about it. I mean, it's dope, folks. Don't you worry. You know how we do here. I'm going to show you in a little bit. Dope video. Go through the images and how dope it is and, and all the different tiers, you know. It's Wednesday. I know you guys got your like, pay today. You're getting some money. So treat yourselves to this amazing project. So, you know, I love me my good origin story. So I'll start with you, Justin. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, where you're OG from, and what was the first thing in fandom that you ever fell in love with? Ever? Ever, ever. fell in love with? Okay, well, you got to go back to Star Wars. I think everything starts and ends with Star Wars when, when I was seven right, in yeah. Connecticut. And I was probably a different person before I saw that for the first time. And then I was this, you know, just odd and inspired for the rest of my life since that point. Excellent. Excellent. And what about you, Graham? Where were you? Oh, well, that's easy. It's also Star Wars. It's also Star Wars related. But the uh, the ultimate piece of fandom that uh, I loved was, uh, that I was sort of enamored with was, do you remember the uh, Burger King Star Wars glasses? Oh shit! Do you ever remember those collectible glasses? Yeah. My uh, my like childhood best friend had a set, and he coveted them, and they sat on the shelf in his kitchen, and he never let me use them. And so when I became an adult and uh, could get my own, and when eBay came out, that was the first thing I ever got. Was I went and bought those four glasses to uh, make my little fill so, complete for my childhood fandom phase. So did did you take a picture of yourself drinking from the glass and send it to your friend? Like, yeah, look. <laughs> You know, I actually, I've never used them. <laughs> I immediately got them, you know, came out and looked at them. Yep, that's them. Wrapped them up and pack them, you know, packed them all up and put them in a safe place. Are you still on uh, the top as well? You still torture yourself? Like, oh, I can't use it. <laughs> you know, I have some of those now too. My kids got some for me. So I guess uh, that really is like you've reached the pinnacle of life once you have a set of those. Yeah, those man. Glasses, yeah. <laughs> These fast food places don't do that stuff anymore. That, that, they don't. They don't just plastic cups, and they, they don't save them. It, it was pretty impressive that they made those back then. Oh, heck yeah, man. You know, collectibles that were worth it. Toys that were worth it. Of you course. Know? <laughs> yeah, we all had the Star Wars figures, you know, of course. And I always liked the Mego ones, too. The same friend, he had the Mego set of, like, the Star Trek uh, original series ones. And again, you know, those, I don't have it, but. There's something I coveted of his that I was like, wow, those are awesome. You know what I'm talking about? Where they had like the Mego playset that laid out and you can turn the knob and the transporter worked and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah especially the Star Trek one, one, right? Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Enterprise Bridge. My buddy had that. Uh -huh, yeah. That. <laughs> it was like that puppy foam, which I'm yeah. sure they all dissolved by now. You know, I don't think they made it, you know, 40 years later. All right, he's about to go to eBay in a little bit and start looking to buy one, apparently. He's starting to think about it. Uh-oh, getting dangerous here. So yeah. let me go with you, Graham. So in your geekdom, were you a, a, a lone wolf or did you have a tribe of fellow geeks to enjoy your, your geekdom with? Uh, it was pretty much, a, for the most part, a lone wolf, you know. I uh, just, my my friends weren't into comics, so it's just myself. And uh the uh, introduction really came to be when, um, I mean, I always had some Spider-Mans or whatever as a kid, but there was this, uh, another kid that had this stack of Marvel Universe, the Ultimate Guide books, no, you know? Yeah. 
And uh, he was showing me, and he was sort of like, well, this guy's Wolverine, and he's got this adamantium claws, and, and told me about how it's a healing factor, and he'd kind of go on, and like, this guy's this, and, and that's sort of what got me sparked, you know, my interest in uh, something beyond Star Wars was, uh, was that phase, and then I started collecting, and I went through like the, uh, I'm 50, so I kind of hit the Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, you know, uh, X-Men, and uh, Spider-Man phase is where I was, like, my main collecting period of my life. Yeah, that was a good time, man. I had a lot of goodies in that era, absolutely. Still do. Still do. For sure. Good time. Yeah, Graham, time. Graham's got a really good collection still right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's going to hide that from his kids for a while. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I know, for sure. <laughs> I, I, so far, I'm still the only person that cares about him. Uh, at the, at the, <laughs> Don't you worry, the time will come. Now, yeah. what about you, Justin, man? Were you a lone wolf? Did you have a tribe and you geeked them or what? I was a lone wolf right up until like I was 11 or 12. In middle school, I kind of bonded with some guys that I was playing D&D &D with. And so we were looking at, you know, like fantasy magazines, like heavy metal and and uh, eerie and stuff like that. Dragon right. magazine. And so like those are the buddies I hung with through middle school and into high school and we put some of that stuff down. I also like got into playing rock music with those same dudes. So oh, damn. Uh, it was Lone Wolf as a kid, but like you said, found a tribe, you know? Yeah, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. So how did that all turn into yeah. you, you know, uh, getting into some creative endeavors? You know, when did the creative spark, you know, begin? We always well, had we imagination. Live in LA. We live in Hollywood. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Of course. That's why we moved to Los Angeles. Every day. Yeah. Go ahead, Justin. We work building sets for other people's movies and TV shows. And so we're doing it every day and we talk about it every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Love it. Love it. This is dope. This is dope. So uh what about you, Graham? Uh how did I the question? How did I what do I do? Get into the creative factor? Yeah, I've always had you know imagination. When I realized I couldn't be Han Solo, then I wanted to make movies about Han Solo. You know, that's yeah. the concept. And uh you know, I went to film school in New Mexico, and uh, and of course, that's why I ended up here in Los Angeles, and uh, found my way into the art department doing set dressing, and that's how I met Justin. And you know, we always have like we can relate our childhoods and uh, talk about stuff, and so we'd start kicking around ideas, and uh, that's sort of where we ended up with all of this. Excellent, excellent. All right, so. Talk about then that, that that bromance then. I mean, how the hell did you guys really meet and start the nerdy conversations? Or, or you guys were just complaining, God damn, these motherfuckers keep fucking around these damn sets. I mean, what, what happened? <laughs> well, I mean, we well, always talk don't about stuff. Everybody in the art department always has <laughs> ideas. Everybody's creative in the art department, you know. But uh, I was working on some show and. Uh, there was a bunch of garbage, like set dressing and like set walls and pieces, and I started digging through it. And in it was a, uh, a, a cockpit of a spaceship, you know, that was being tossed out. They were dumping all this garbage, and there's like no way I was gonna let that, you know, go away. So I stored it in my garage, and then it sat there, you know, waiting to have some perfect project for it. And uh, eventually, ten years later. We came up with something. Then that's why I met Justin. Yeah, I met I met Graham working on that show Monk. Do you remember that show? Oh shit, I remember Monk. Yeah. yeah. And so we're doing some fun stuff. It was probably weekend work, like we're you know, kind of hanging out, being a little looser. And he's one of the first things he tells me is he's got a spaceship in his garage. And uh, yeah, it's sort of a real like, conversation like, starter. Yeah, like what do you do with a spaceship sitting in your garage? What do you do with it? Oh shit. <laughs> I so mean, so I then. Uh, I, I want to ask you, bro. Uh, are you real, bro? Are you an alien? Uh, are you a lizard on that skin? <laughs> I didn't ask him that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was like a, my favorite Martian. <laughs> <laughs> Great show, uh, too. Shit. Old school, old school. I love that stuff. All right. So, folks, you know, you know, we're gonna. I'm gonna start teasing the project a little bit. Let, let me bring that up real quick. All right. All right. I mean. It's going to be fun, folks. Hello, where are you at? There we are. Entire screen, folks. There's a lot of technology. It doesn't want to move as fast as it should. It cleans as fast. It's as fast as I'm like, bendito. There we go. Adding the step right now. You know, folks, right here. Right here. Let's take a look. 
Walk, folks, and in that fire. And look, folks, right. that's 23 days to go with 47 backers. A salute to you guys, supported independent out of five racks right now. They're at 3,800. So, folks, let's make it happen. Congrats. I mean, that's actually really good. I mean, you guys got Thanks. a wonderful head start right here. So, that's awesome. So, talk to me. What's ultra rare? Ultra Rare What's is sort of our production uh, brand that we've come up with. It's, it, we made it when we made the short film that inspired the comic, and uh, we've continued on with it for other, you know, projects that we've done. Gotcha. So I like what it says. Here. What would you do if you had a time machine in your garage? So am I to assume that your spaceship actually was the one that inspired the project? <laughs> it is. So we were working on a show and we came across like some old rusty like tanks and like water tanks and boilers. And we we're like, well, that looks like a time machine. Hey, wait a second. Is is this ship a time machine? So and that's funny. when we uh, came up with that, uh, started working on the story idea. Instead of being a spaceship, it was a time machine. And we started building out the rest of it and uh, writing the script and went ahead and shot it, you know. And then uh, it's further down the, the scroll as you go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and look at these colors right there, the Burbank comic book series. And here with this particular campaign, you're going for both one and two. Wonderful. Yeah, we wanted to keep the story. What the hell? <laughs> Is that what that That's thing looks like in the garage, bro? <laughs> All right, so there's a short film that goes that that we re, that was the inspiration for the comic. And you can okay. see it all in there. Link's on that on that page but i'll drop it into the chat here too excellent excellent but I mean, look at this art man i mean yeah that's when, so when, you, when you guys got into this were you guys even aware of what you guys were getting into did you know how to put together a comic book or did you go in blindly and say let's just do this we'd, we'd written a bunch of scripts so we were and yeah we were sort of familiar with that kind of layout of the imagery and so on but and then you know there's a learning curve but the most exciting thing is really to, like, uh, we sent the script to Jason Masters. He's the uh, pencil and inker, and it's just great to see it come back and look exactly how we imagined it, you know? It's really exciting. Oh, man, look at that. Hey, I I, I, I think I know that car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might know that one. Yo, that looks that's, great. That's though, one man. of our future stories. I, I can't wait to get to that one, actually. Exactly. But to do that, we're going to have to get these first few out. Oh, look at that. They're teasing, folks. You see this? If you want that, wait a minute. <laughs> what? what? You're playing games with us, aren't you? Excellent. All right, hold on. Boom. I got something coming up. I, don't know, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. But while that comes up real quick, let's just keep turning a little bit. There isn't time. Try oh, shit. Look at this. Look at the different views we're getting here. So we, oh. when we got a... Uh... We got, we got to talk about our, our artists. They're so amazing. This is all this one uh, illustrator, Jason Masters, who just turns in really incredible work. And the uh, colorist, Sebastian Cheng. They're like some really heavy hitters in the, in the comic world. I'm so, seeing my little color. Gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. All right. So before we get into the story, you know what I mean? They, they, just, they just done hooked it up. Boom. Oh, snap, folks. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, do it. It's that's fun. <laughs> All right, let's check out some of it right now. So, 
What's up? Oh, get out of here. It's so annoying. <gasps> oh, it's rare! Hey, everybody, I'm Graham Robertson. I'm Justin Fisher. And we are the creators of the Burbank comic book series, which is now live on Kickstarter. Thanks so much to everyone that's given us support already. We do need some more help, so please jump on that campaign if you get a chance. So we are at a warehouse in Hollywood, California that has a lot of set dressing and uh, props and items like that. And in it is, there's a time machine in there somewhere, I'm sure. The time machine from our short film is housed inside. So we're going to take a look and see if we can find it. Let's go. All right. All right, we found it. Yeah, we did. It's looking pretty good. What the? Uh, holy shit. <laughs> right? Isn't that that thing awesome? Is. Let's get some power to it. And see I said it's light crazy. Up. <laughs> All right. So it didn't look like that when Graham first found it. So we've been working on it for a long time. Oh, shit. Yo, wepa. That's my. Oh, modelo. Eh? <laughs> Still not working. Is she the right car? Rock is a normal guy. Yeah. Hold on. Our right, time so, uh, traveler is just a regular guy. He just happens to have a time machine in his garage. Oh, there's a Viper right there. The Yo, look at that. Oh, shit. Yo, this is so cool. I'm okay. loving this. Right. We got it. Yo. All right, so there we go. Working time machine. Check out our Kickstarter for Burbank issues one and two. Just hit the link that's in the bio and leave us a message. What would you do if you had a time machine in your garage? Thank you. What would I do indeed? Yeah. There All right. you go. Thanks, Fun, right? Oh, that's fire. But, yo, that shit is fire, dude. I mean, when you guys hit the convention uh, scene, uh, are you bringing that with us? Which is <laughs> we need that's a, a big great idea. <laughs> yeah, it's like the size of a Volkswagen. Oh, damn. Really? Damn. Yeah. It's probably faster than a Volkswagen, though, too, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let, let's get into it. I mean, look at that right here. So introduce it to the characters, though. I mean, what, what, what was it like to create these characters? Were they, are they inspired by anyone that, in, in your lives or what? Talk about that cast you got here. Oh, for sure. Like, uh... We started writing it, and uh, after a little while, it was like, you know what? Let's. So, Rockman Dunbar is the actor that plays Rock in the uh, short film. And Rock and I went to college together, and I've known him a long time. And anytime I have like a some sort of project, I always rope him in some way or another. And so I asked him if he wanted to do the the short, and he said, yeah. And uh, so we sort of wrote it for him, and. Uh, there's a lot of rock in there. He's just such a cool dude and uh, amazing actor. And he just brought it to life. And uh, yeah. we continue on with it. That's so a, that's... the the comic itself is gonna he's gonna have some buddies that show up and they go on trips together. There's some, you know, there's some time travelers. We're not quite sure what their motives are. He's gonna hang out with. He's got a family. He's got three kids and a great wife. And he doesn't quite know how to let them know that he's been had this thing in the garage the whole time. It's a secret from them. Big secret. Yeah, so that's pretty rough on him. He doesn't quite know how to handle that. Oh, man. You know how much fun I would have? Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't tell anybody shit either because they're going to be, let me see what you were doing on this day. <laughs> well, mean, there's, there's, always the, there's always the risk of, you know, you don't want to mess anything up. You want to you don't want to change your timeline or alter it or anything like that. So Rock's deal is he uses it like a... Uh, household appliance you know he uses it to go get an awesome birthday present for somebody or he uses it to go watch a sporting event or something that you know happened 20 years ago like he's not going to do anything crazy like keep the titanic from sinking or whatever but i think he is crazy i mean go back into the past and wear yellow pants <laughs> well no his buddy <laughs> talked him into that <laughs> so he's, got and, his and there, he's, he's going back to 1977 that's what everybody wore Oh, that's why he looked like Mr. Furley, the other homie over here. Yeah, this guy looking like that. The, the, they uh, they're at the premiere of Star Wars in that image. I saw, <laughs> look at that. I, I guess that's where you guys would go if you had the chance, huh? I think that's the point. Like, what, what, what's something really fun? What would you do? Like, there's like some awesome sporting events you'd want to see. You'd want to like, I don't know. Graham says we should go to Roswell. What really happened at Roswell? 
know, well, it, you know it, it, is that bridge that they made there is that where the, the, the parts are buried huh let's find out right <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey so you've got an interesting shot up right now those are some alternative uh covers from some other artists that are really amazing that is my who did the the, the, the portrait cover there because that shit is dope very alex rossi uh yeah his name is keith oschlager he is a uh painter lives in denver colorado big comic book fan and he's actually the one that introduced us to zach howard who introduced us to the other uh, illustrator and colorist that we use for the comic series zach howard has done like aliens and venom and he's got a kickstarter going right now called moonshine bigfoot he's sort of a big veteran uh comic book guy yeah i know moonshine other... bigfoot, yeah okay Yep, yep. Yeah. And, and look at this gorgeous book right there. That's right, a couple of sample pages. I mean, look, look at this, folks. Look at that. Woo! Fire. I love the lettering, man. That, like this right here, that bottom, man. Yeah. Dope. Dope. All right. And, and just the way the panels work, too. I mean, how much direction you guys have in that input? Or, or you allow the, the you know, creative, you know, the artistry just to, you know, have at it? Uh, he knows the number of panels. He knows what's happening. And all the rest is him, you know? Oh, man. And look, there's ever your letter or two is awesome. Because, again, just the placement of the bubble doesn't disturb, you know, the awesome art. You get to enjoy all the scenery. You know what I mean? I did the lettering. Yeah. <laughs> awesome great job yeah great job yo i mean look at this it is it is exciting like when the artist shows up with something that you didn't expect like we give yeah. them some good ideas and a script and stuff but when there's something like like wow we never thought of that this you know this view before but this is really amazing or how they take this whole action and convert it into just one image you're like yeah that nails it it's it's really it's something i couldn't do it's pretty spectacular you know, Ooh, Jason's here, here we go hold on we got sign here right we got a teaser you want to show yeah. that teaser bro yeah it's yeah. it's a quick one minute shot of the the short film that inspired the comic excellent i'm going to share the short film you know link you know it's right here folks that way if you're interested and i put it at the bottom of the notes but here's a nice little teaser right here check it out This will be my first fully operational test. I should have enough juice to move me forward one time leap. Once I start the compression process and hit the injectors, I should have five billion joules of energy and one instantaneous surge. I will literally be riding a bolt of lightning. <laughs> This looks massively clean, dude. Man. I've been looking for you for some time. This is for you. And this thing is pulling from some bottomless well, then it should allow my system to go anywhere, anytime. Your solution to time travel. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Oof. Oh, guys, guys. When did we get what? Okay, I, I really gotta watch the, the the whole short. You guys got me interested, like a mother. Right, right on. Thanks, Al. And that looks so clean and good. I mean, like, yo, you put some 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 great time into that, huh? We sure did. We thought. I mean, we thought about it forever. <laughs> uh, and that's why we want to do the comic. You know, we want to keep the story going in the comic book form. And uh, Every, a little more. You're showing that to that people. Way. Everyone is like, "Oh man, what's going to happen next?" You know. And so we just keep coming up with more and more adventures for Rock to go on. And again, just look at this, man. Is that all right? I mean, and if you again look at the art, the the the, the actor, and then just the the right here, how he look. I mean, well done, man. For real. I guess you guys gotta cosplay as them when you do a, a convention. <laughs> Who's gonna wear the, the sure. thing though? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can just get uh, 
you know, Rockman Dunbar to come with us. Oh, sick, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really like loving the art, yo. I mean, you guys, shit, some kick yeah. ass. But where am I? There we go. Look what yeah. I would love to drive one of those. <laughs> that was living right down the street from Graham, actually. What? Yeah. Yeah. He, George, uh, George Ferris's garage used to be down the street. I live in Burbank. And okay. uh, you can drive by and you can see it through the window. You can see that in uh, Knight Rider, you know, the kit was parked in there too and uh one time we were on a show and um our driver knew the guys there and he was like hold on a second and he pulled over we went in there he talked to his buddy and the guy we walked in and he took away the rope and i got to climb in the front seat oh man i think i'm true <laughs> it was pretty awesome I mean, uh, when, when they when they try, when they told you it was over and you had to get out, of it, they try to did they have to pry you from the car? Or? <laughs> I I took lots of photos for sure. <laughs> but yeah, you but, picked up the bat phone, you know. Played yeah, it. it was the day of selfie because I hate selfies <laughs> all day. <laughs> oh yeah, love it, love it. And look at that, we're gonna wow, look at this. Already got stuff all done, gone. So let's start it here, folks. You can make a pledge just for a buck, just because you love it. You're, you're nice. You can even tip them five dollars again uh, and have and have a good time. But you could also spend five dollars and get a digital copy. All right, which they still have. You know, uh, digital copy of two is five. The digitals of one and two is ten. Uh, the a physical copy starting at fifteen. And again, you have already tears that are gone. Those early birds. I mean, I'm, you must have been happy and excited to see Early Bird gone when you went live. Anybody, Absolutely. anybody checking in is great. So, dope, dope, dope. There we go. So we got this is the physical starting at 15. I mean, that's at the variance as well. I mean, this is great. All right. So what we got 25 for physical copies of one and two. You get a nice sweet deal there, guys. A little, a little bit of a break. And again, so you guys know this is going to be an estimated delivery of Daniel. January 2024. So is that still valid? I mean, you, you keep it on track for, for the 24th. The book's printed. What's the so purpose far, of the project so here? So far on track. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, look at these. Well, you have all time. Then you have another stuff that's all gone. Check you out. <laughs> Love yeah, it. We might, have, we might have to get some of those are the cool ones where like someone would like to get yeah. their image in the comic. We might have to add some of those again. We'll see. Yeah, you get drawn in like on a poster yeah. or in an article or billboard or something like that yeah we might have to add a few more we might have to find another another spot for that to happen we'll see you should i mean obviously people are interested in seeing the imagery i mean you know, us as people we're all so vain we want to see look, look, look i'm gonna come no, it's, it's fun to be a part of it right oh heck yeah look what's what's quick donation hey what's going on you want to uh, support one of, hey, hey, hey you gotta yeah. read it that, that that's for the friends that uh don't care but uh want to support yeah, man. Yeah, you know, listen. I, I, I've seen it. I've seen people donate because they just, and then they say there's no money. Bullshit. <laughs> people just want to. They hold on to the money to support what they love. That's what it is, right here. All right. Yeah. And we got a lot of tears. Reward. There you go. Your name mentioned. You know that was limited to two. Get drawn for two hundred. Oh, that's awesome, bro. I like that. Get drawn and named. How nice. And so, you, so you're saying I, I could have a poster looking like Uncle Sam, where it'll be, you know, Al Mega pointing yeah. as like reading read the pen. Absolutely. And Let's go. We, we can do it. We have a uh, scene outside of Tower Records. So maybe it'll be one of the Tower. albums on the wall there. Look at Showing our ages here much, are we? Tower Records. <laughs> hey, well, one of my, one of our favorite things of this is to find like those pop you know, like those pop culture little moments that people will recognize and feel like, oh, yeah, I remember that. And uh, I think that's what our time traveler wants to do. He wants to go back to that stuff that we remember as being awesome. He actually wants to return the tape before they charge him a late fee, you know. <laughs> I still got my blockbuster card, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I just found mine, actually. Isn't that funny? I mean, blockbuster yeah, need to come yeah. back, bro. Tapes are making a comeback. Let's go. I, got, I still got my VCR. I just went and to the one in Ben, the last, the last blockbuster. I was there last year. Really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was super fun. I felt the same feeling of like walking up and down the aisles, going, "What do I get?" You know. Gotcha, gotcha. You and, know? And, and did you have the wonderful feeling of being ignored by the staff when you ask for recommendations? You know. Totally. 
And look at this right here. For, I love looking at this, the progression. I mean, it look up. Fire. Oh, fire. Wow. Just wow. I mean, from this to that to boom. Yeah, that's a uh, Sebastian Chang did the coloring. He's a uh, artist that works out of uh, Malaysia. Oh, wow. How did how, how'd you find him? Also through Zach Howard. He'd done a book for him with uh, Jason Masters. But uh, Sebastian's done everything. He's done like Amazing Spider-Man and X-Men and, you know, Daredevil. He does all kinds of Marvel things. And uh, he does Batman Beyond right now. Oh, and nice, nice. He's a very busy guy for sure. And it's awesome. And we feel very lucky to have him. Yo, for real. I mean, shit, bless for real. So a time lapse right there. Well, speaking of, yeah. Yeah. Check this out. This is that's a time lapse of Sebastian working. Yeah, you but, should click that. That was a good one. Let's check that out. Oh, oh, rare. very cool you see that cleanup on the artistry holy shit i never really seen that on the digital end you know i'm mean, seeing the old yeah. school people erasing but on the digital end looks very interesting wow totally there we go the cast right here and look these are, illustrations are done by the same guy who did the variant cover with the portrait that you're looking at well, I mean, look at that, though. Shit, how did he do it? This is pencil, so shit, because, wow. Yeah, he did it with pencil. Wow, look at that. Damn, man, look at this. Whoa. These are sort of our models that we had sent to Jason uh, when we were sort of filling out an illustrator to do the comic and said these are kind of what we want all the characters to look like. Awesome, man. Yo, this looks... Wow, that you quite an artist, oh, yo. Who's that? Who's that going by? <laughs> She's gonna show it. <laughs> Amelia Earhart. Oh, see, you found her, <laughs> and she's old. Yeah, but she's she's had had a bunch of adventures since we last heard from her. Gotcha! Holy shit, man! Apparently so. And obviously, we saw the short film. You know, yeah. and, and folks, I'll put the link below. This is what you guys see right there. I put it, but it's 17 minutes, and I think you two probably want to smack the shit out of me if I did that. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it is, but you got the whole team right there, the squad. All right, so that, but you got to visit the well, There's page. Jason. Yeah. You got to visit the page, but you got to make it happen. Then it goes page. His awesome works. The Sebastian. Damn. Yeah, look, at, look at that incredible work they do, those guys do. Jesus Christ. There goes Keith. Yep. Dan. All right. Dan's so Dan is working on another. Dan's working on another comic for us. Really? Hopefully that one will come out later. Also, yeah, right making that. it happen, huh? Shit. Ooh, that was nice. One too. Oh, yeah. Very J. Scott Campbell. And the look on this one yeah definitely it has a, a little more uh, cartoony style it's a little more lighthearted, you know no but i dig it man I, yeah. I, i'm digging the hell out of that you know and a shout out to the egg studios team for real big shout out to kevin and, and the fam the whole squad doing what they do helping independent creators but yeah this project man is insane tons of stuff and what's amazing folks as you can see plenty of time to go all right so let's make it happen we, we are just 1200 more just to get to the goal that's gonna happen friday and then blockbuster stuff some more tears i mean do you guys have any plans or surprises for, for reaching any new plateaus anything special yeah we're gonna add some more uh, digital uh copies of other comics to it we're sort of organizing that right now is the plan we've been working with uh, ink studios to work it out Oh, fire, guys fire. Super, yeah, they've been super helpful, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the next few days we'll have some, some more uh, exciting news about that. Uh, awesome! So, all right, so you got this, and so let's talk about Ultra Rare as a whole. I mean, 
what's the overall plan? How many comic books you want to do? Is it a connected universe or one and done stories? What's the plan? Uh, we, we definitely have a two going right now and, and both are very well thought out. Like we, we have like extended stories for both of them. Um, are they connected universes? I would say no, but, uh, okay. But uh, they're still fun. We could expand both universes if we needed to. Absolutely. Hey, love that. So are you guys going to be hitting a, a convention tour before the end of the year? Doing any, any convention or just, you know, w working on finishing this project? I think we have to finish this one before we can uh, get out into the world. But, okay, absolutely. you know, maybe next year. Maybe next year this will be, everyone will I see would... us in person. Yeah, I, I can't wait to hold it in my hand. Is what I keep saying. You know, I can't yeah, wait to hold my here. hand and show it around. Yeah, and smell that ink, right? Just take a whiff of that shit. I get you, man. Use some good stuff, bro. That that Colombian ink, you know. Come on. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so, um, all right. So we got to where we talked about the convention. Um, what what uh, if you have an idea for this to be anything outside of a comic book? What would you want it to be? Well, do you want the movie or do you want to go the animated route? Oh, oh, uh, we, we would love to see it as a TV series, absolutely. Like, oh, you know, TV we originally series. as conceived of it as a TV series. And when and during the pandemic, we wrote the, you know, the first season. And so it's easy to adapt those into our comic book right now. Oh, shit. Nice. Yeah. Oh, you guys kept busy during uh, the, the, the C word season, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind, of, yeah, it kind, it. kind of a special gift, you know. We got some time to focus on some stuff that wasn't work, you know, some things that mean some, something more. So did you guys connect in, in person, or, or was it all also done remotely and shit like the rest of the world? It, it was all remo remotely. It's all remote. We, been, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we can get on the phone. We can hang out. Yeah, there we go, right? I, but we would really love to see this. As a you know, as a live action TV show too, we talk about it all the time. How great it would be to shoot it and produce it as a, as a show. I mean, the way that video look, holy crap! Yes, please. I think I we need to make a shout out to uh, yeah. Our uh, we want to see more. Our DP was Rick Serena, and he made it look really amazing. For Yo. sure. Salute, man. You have an amazing squad of talented people, yo. That, you know, and again, that's that's what makes a successful project. This is why this is at 76% of its goal already. Because people know quality when they see it, and people are actually passionate. And I love to see, you know, fellow geeks at work create something that looks so fire and then just have that 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 luck to, to be able to work with such talented people and you know, just that squad. So a big salute to you guys for that, yo, for Thank real. You. Woo. So, we got to keep it going. We really want to keep this rolling right along. Yep. So there we go, folks. Once again, 76% of the goal. Let's make it 100 by this Friday. Yeah. So that we can open up a whole bunch more. Say, let's manifest the goal. Let's make it happen. All right. So before you, we go, you have any words of advice for up and coming Susan? This is you guys are fresh on the scene and, and you know, this is your baby. Like, what would you tell somebody else, you know, in development of their baby? Hmm. I would say ask a lot of questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions and uh, reach out to all your friends. Cause I mean, that's how we were able to do all both of these projects is all who, you know, I mean, you creative people connect with creative people all the time and uh, you just keep the juices flowing and uh, that's, what's most important, you know, be nice the to more, everybody and uh, ask your friends. We just keep working on it every day. And the more, the more we talk about this stuff, the more we work on it, the better it gets. Yeah, absolutely. There we go, folks. Amazing creators, Indy. So just, just as a fan of comics and a fan of amazing creators, I want to say thank you, you know, for, you know, just stepping up and putting your work out there and, you know, bringing it to the world. I think people are going to hella enjoy it. You already saw, folks, the artistry. You, you saw the samples. They have a plan. So, and, and the book is going to be in your hands, and then let's make that TV show happen. You know, uh, next time we're going to see them winning awards for, for having a hit TV show, you know, Oh, and would you want it to be regular TV, like old school standard TV, or, or would it be a streaming show where I'm going to binge it all at once? Streaming. Streaming. That way we're not like you're confined to like the time limit. You know, you could be like a 22 minute episode, you could be like a 37 minute episode, and you can tell your whole story per episode that you needed to. Oh, oh man. Look at this on the post. You know, they know what they want, you see? Oh, yeah. And because we of talk that, a lot you know, about it. 
That's what I love it. This is why this is going to be ill, and this is going to be exactly what you want this to manifest into. I see it, and I believe it. One more time, folks, please support it. Burbank, the comic book series, which is one and two, live on Kickstarter right now. The link is below. Click away, click away, and support amazing independent comic books and, of course, the, the creative teams behind them. All right, you know, the short film, I'm going to put that link below, is on Vimeo. So you guys are going to have a, a good time watching that. We already showed you a sample of it. So, I mean, come on. How could you not want to watch that? It looks fire. I know I will right after this. That's the thing I'm going to do before going to Betty by today. And I'll be dreaming that I'm going to be time traveling, apparently, and some, and some crazy looking device. All right. So this is great. Uh, Graham, Justin, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you so much for, for joining me. My fellow crusaders, y'all too. Also tells you what to do. You know what it is. Hasta la próxima, mi gente. Much love. Wepa! Thanks, Al. Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 